Joining us on the show now is a child rights advocate, parenting enthusiast, and life coach, Dr. Nimi Ekere. Welcome to the show, madam. Thank you, Mariah. Good to have you on the show. Good to be um, here. I know we like to celebrate children today, which is absolutely what we're, going to, what we're going to do today. But it's also an important day to remind ourselves of what can be done and what have we done so far to protect our children. In your work as a child rights advocate, um, do you think we have actually um, made some important strides in this issue of protection or there's still a long way to go in protecting the uh, rights of children? Thank you for that question. I think we have a long way to go. So I'll give you reasons and maybe... At the end of the day, you'll draw your conclusions. Um, first of all, UNICEF carried out a survey in 2020, and it states that Nigeria has the highest number of children that are out of school. So as we speak, we have the highest number of out-of-school children. 3.2 million children are out of school right now, aged um, 10 to 14 years. So if they're out of school, what are they doing? Hawking, yeah. prostituting, and yeah. in, probably involved in kidnapping, child kid. I mean, there are all sorts of atrocities and vices. Right now, on the five mortality, that's death from children, uh, death zero that will call, yeah, zero to five. Right. I mean, you are breast. Nigeria is leading, and this is also based on the UNICEF finding of, in, of 2020. So children are dying from preventable causes like malaria, malaria. malnutrition. Mm. Meningitis, things that are avoidable. We have child, um, the Child Rights Act. How many? She's a lawyer. I mean, so I mean, she will portray this um, yeah. thing or this fact. Yeah. How many children, how many states have adopted the Child Rights Act? Just 25. Oh, no. uh, mm. So we have 11 states that have not adopted it. And this was domesticated in Nigeria in 2003. So it's almost a decade. So what are we waiting for? Yeah. Our children are not protected in any way. Yeah. So if bringing it back home, like if I have to be practical, a child is abused and we, uh, we make noise about it, we scream, we shout. After some time, it's swept under the carpet. The case goes moribund. The perpetrator is, I mean, maybe a, a big man with money, influence and power and suppresses the victim. So it just continues and continues. The cycle continues. Mm. People are abusing children. And then the children, in turn, grow up to be abusers. Yeah. You know, so we're just in a society right. that has not protected the children enough. One of the things that I've that is really plaguing children more than ever in this season is abuse, is the sexual abuse. Considering all that has been trending in recent times, what can we, because a, a lot of people are watching right now, what can we do to protect our children more from these abuse? How do we spot it? Okay, like that's a question she asked. Mm. We have to pay attention to detail as, as parents. Mm. Know when your child is deviating from what they used to be in the past. A child that was boisterous, uh, boisterous um, playful, becoming very quiet. There should be, that should be a, a red flag that something is wrong. A child that is not doing well academically, you know, a child that was okay academically, now regressing. You should, as a parent, you should find out what's happening. A child that becomes Dr. very... Dr. Nimi, yes. there are some powerful people that abuse children, where maybe the mothers are disempowered. They, they are, maybe they are they helps, and they are dependent on these powerful people. And they can't speak. So they are now having to choose between protecting my child or surviving, where the person who you are dependent on is the one, is the abuser. In that situation, what in your work, how do you help mothers children. like that to find protection and even children like that? How do you protect people like that in that situation? I must tell you, it's a very big problem. Let me give you an example, a, first, a quick example. A parent called me, she just lost her husband and her son was gang raped in a school. So we her know son. that it's not, her son in secondary school was gang raped, and according to him, they, they, they were masked. And a popular school. And, you know, I, I, of course, we wanted to give the child all the help that he needed. The mother was happy, but when I told the mother that we're going to name the school, that we're going to put, out the, put the school out there, she started begging. Why? She was so, she was scared, that a widow. And that's what we have in Nigeria. People are scared. Stigma is a problem. People wear silence like a badge of honor. And you don't blame them. Their fears are valid. People, people stigmatize victims. 
Sadly so. And so when you see someone with so much power and influence suppressing them or oppressing them, they don't want to speak up. So as an NGO, we try to, you know, demystify this. Let people know that they have a voice. It doesn't matter your socioeconomic status. You have a voice. So aside, aside, you and know, you can get the help that you need. Name in the school now. What then can you now do for that child? Because of, of, of the course, child, why you focus on the other? Yes, yes. The child is the victim. Yes, of course. The child, the child is the most important person here. Child is priority. But you see, if we don't name the school, if we don't call out the school, if we don't go there to find out the perpetrators, worst things will be happening. And nobody. I, I mean, we got to hear this. How about the ones that no, are no, left no. on head? So on head of. So I think that people should speak up. Don't. You don't blame them, but with what we have now, NGOs are, are doing their best, and I think that we need the government um, collaboration. It's a multi-sectoral co collaboration right, just that we need. So